Welcome back to a whole new episode of Conversations with Kenny. Uh, this time around, I got a very special guest. I've been trying to get her on for some quite some time now, but she is a very busy person. And once you see her come on the screen, you know exactly who I'm talking about. But before we get into the conversations, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. We are still in the holiday spirit. Don't forget to go to Ringside Collectibles because they are the sponsor for this episode. Use the code word, the call up to save 10%. And don't forget, it, it, like I said, it is the holiday season let's give something back to the kids that are less fortunate than us this holiday season and join the fake cave the run-in podcast and conversations with kenny as we do our annual toy drive if you're not familiar with the annual toy drive is where we wrestling fans give back to those those less fortunate um you have until the 17th of this month to contribute that could be any toy that's unopened it could be wrestling toys it could be barbie dolls it could be um science sets whatever you think that a kid will want um just go to the fake cave over on facebook that will give you all the information and let's put some smiles on some kids faces today's guest she is one half well one third of the java tears podcast she is uh, one of the promoters of Battle Club Pro, and if she is a big advocate for women's wrestling. We're going to pick her brain a little bit. We're going to bring in Janelle from the HR. What Yay! is going on? Hello. Janelle, finally, Hello. finally, we got you on here. I thought I had to just keep sitting in the in the comments of all the live feeds like, hey, what's going <laughs> on? Hey, I'm in the building. Or I had to come to all the Battle Club Pro events and be like, yo, you know, I'm, I'm here. I was about to take the microphone I in front of the dues. table and be like and be like you know what listen we're gonna do we're gonna do it right here listen i was ready when you was so but i i, I can't find too so i get it but but i'm here you got me yes finally so <laughs> oh um, your show and once again any, any questions i will truthfully and honestly as best as i can <laughs> got you got you so, like I said before, you are one third of the uh, the Job Matias podcast. We had Sir Wilkins on here, and he was just Sir Wilkins is his own character. You know what I mean? Like, and, and that's what, I think that's why I love. I think that's what a lot of people love about the uh, about like the group, the Job Matias. Is like each person brings like their own flavor to um, to the table. You have you know uh, Mister Black, who's been. Um, doing his referee thing, but like outside of the referee world, he's you know constantly doing like interviews. He's been working with uh, with Kofi uh, Weston from uh, the Dirty Heels, you know what I mean. And then you know we have you, who's been like advocating for like women's wrestling. Every time I see uh, an indie event, I always bump into you. I'm I'm always seeing you there. I'm uh, if, if if it's not there, it's on Facebook. You know, always sitting there, um, sending off like tweets and and posts and stuff like that. So, like, where did the love of wrestling come like come from? Um, I guess being a kid that wanted to be up late at night and and watch TV and fell into my lap in a sense. So I I always tell the story where like I would had to be six or seven and. Like, like my grandmother always had this rule of like, like when a ball. So anybody that's listening that's not in New York, Apollo Showtime out there. Apollo came on at one o'clock in New York. Oh so yeah. She was like when that goes off, you you go off. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but um, one week and I was at home. I wasn't at my grandmother's house, and I was up still. I had to figure out a way to still watch TV without having everybody you know I'm still up. So I just and I was just flicking through. And ECW, I came across ECW, which was um, here in New York. So that's kind of like how it kind of fell into that real quick. And then mm -hmm. I fell into WCW actually right after that, um, where I watched this league. And then, you know, we're all kind of sick. It's got to kind of get smooth. And I was clicking back and forth. Everybody had that experience of growing up clicking back and forth. But I've always... I've had a love for it. Um, even since then, um, even growing up, always tell you like she's always loved wrestling. Like this is this is not like a over that I've always loved it. Mm -hmm. It's just dope now being an adult and having that, that love wrestling, and I can talk about wrestling 
wrestling. And that's kind of actually how I met. So I looked for his viewing party almost 10 years ago. <laughs> You know, hold on. I, I don't mean to cut you off, but your, your audio is, is like fading in and out. Okay, yeah. hold on. One second. Let's see if I can pick because I want to be able to give you the best. So hold on. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Nope. But now, oh, there you go. Okay, sorry. I had to put my headphones in. Sometimes it comes. But, but okay, you can hear me. We know we good. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. As I was saying, so, yeah, I started doing parties that Sir Wilkins were hosting. Me, and then me and him hey, kind of no. like. Nope, now it's still it's still cutting off. It is? Now, okay, hold yeah, on. Yeah, now you're completely cut off. Yeah. <laughs> hold on. God, I hate, hate Let me get off. What about now? now? It's good now, but then I now I can't see you. I'm here. Yep. You good? You can nope. hear me? Nope. No, I can't. No, I can't hear you. You can't hear no, me. Not you can't hear me. I can see your lips moving, but I can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Always on. Mm, it, it like it goes in and out. I don't know if it's my Wi-Fi because that always trips. Up. Okay, right now, whatever you just did right now is completely perfect. Oh, okay, cool. There you go. I will stick to the phones. I will stick to just how. It looks, it's fine. <laughs> just, <laughs> just in case. So, so I right. and started hosting the viewing party. So, it was a really good way of kind of getting the community, you know, people of color that, that love wrestling. And, you know, it was kind of always that taboo thing growing, growing up. Like, you didn't, didn't want to say you were a fan, but now kind of being mm-hmm. older and being kind of like free and free, like, I love wrestling. And everybody goes, me too. And it's just like, it's, it's such a different than it was growing up. So I, I, I'm blessed to be surrounded by myself um, that loves wrestling, that has supported not only wrestling, independent wrestling, um, and all of the above. So it's just, it's a really good experience now. But yeah, that's mm-hmm. kind of my journey through wrestling <laughs> as a kid and now as an adult. You know, and and it's great because like when I got introduced to the job at Tears, like I seen like there's like the the first time I got introduced to you guys is, is when you guys started doing these parties, like the viewing parties, you know. And I and sadly I haven't been to one, you know what I mean. And and Better. and Wilkins always yeah Wilkins yeah Wilkins always gets on me on that. He's just like yo like when are you gonna show up to one of these things? And I'm like I'm I'm gonna come. And then, as you know, it is, I get so comfortable in my house. And then I'm just like, am I really going to go? You know, uh, I know, like, you know, Gigi that I work with over on the on the Knuckleheads okay. Network. Like, yeah, That's she's, you know, she's been there. So I told, you know, everybody else, like, hey, we got to go. We got to go together and, and you know, and go to one of these viewing parties. But like, like I said, like, the thing that I love is that, like, when you go to these things, of like the videos that I've seen and, and the pictures, like the vibe that's just there is so family oriented. Like, like mm-hmm. everybody, like people told me, like when I asked other people about it, they was just like, you can go by yourself and not feel like you're by yourself. So funny. Um, not so far series. The pay view before that, there was mm-hmm. someone else, and then the next pay per view, the one that just, yeah, Survivor series that just passed, mm-hmm. they came. All right, we're gonna sit together since they sat last, last time together randomly together they didn't know each mm-hmm. other but now they came together to the next viewing party together so it's definitely a really really good people network i, I always try to force every, everyone to network like that is yeah. always can't help or if you know the boys can't help there is someone else in this, this melting pot that can help you and be able to get help and and, and support you in, in any way so body touch everybody and, and being able to you know work together because that's all, us starting the pod- 
podcast, we really like it started to be bigger than than us. <laughs> so mm-hmm. kind of like it's still fun, which is good because once it's not fun anymore, then we're gonna have it's still very very fun, and everybody makes it fun for us. So it's it, right. it, you know, I, I you know we get things that people say I started the podcast because we I or you know, mm-hmm. you know I I did this because I saw you guys guys do it and you guys were successful at kind of see you know people just kind of being motivated and it, and it, it's funny because just like that we look at everybody like that like we always try to you know not only support comes and support us so yeah I mean, I mean through you guys and like the um like the shows that you guys do i've i've linked up with a lot of different people uh, I think that's how I met the Dirty Heels and like me and, and Kofi, like we became good friends. Um, like Henny, Henny Wrestling is another person that I I, I met through. He's all you know, like going, <laughs> yeah, going through events and stuff like that. So like you definitely bring everyone together. And that's what I love is just like when I go to these events, for, like especially for like Battle Club Pro is like seeing people that are like myself, you know what I mean? Who's like African-American, Puerto Rican to that they're not just in the audience like they're running the shows they're entertaining the kids they're um you know feeding families and putting smiles on everyone's faces like that to me is like such like it it, it brings me good energy when i when, when i see this and i i brung my my son i brought both of both my kids to a battle club pro event when they had the halloween one and i was and they loved it you know what i mean and then That's we went to the show. you know so yeah, it was exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it was so it, it's great to see that. And it's great to see like that, you know, because we don't really see too much of that on TV. You know what I mean? You don't. Was, so that actually was kind of the premise of, of Jobber Slam. Like that was kind of mm-hmm. like the biggest thing was, you know, we don't see it being done. Let's do it our, ourselves. And that's kind of, mm-hmm. you, you know, if no one else is doing it, not to say we want to be the first, but we want to be and to show that this is a necessity mm-hmm. in, in professional mm-hmm. wrestling. So, like, it's super important that it had, had to be everybody, except for Masha, but, you know, she fights to the barbecue. But everybody <laughs> that got booked and was on the show was a person of color. important to have mm-hmm. that because, you know, you have kids that, you know, never been to a, see somebody that looks like them, that talks like them. Mm-hmm that interacts with them, um, they feel that, and they remember that. And that's always a big thing for me, is that those job stand for me was super dope and important because, you know, for us as a pod, to partner with Battle Club, which we've been in, in business with since, you know, the old, for us to kind of do a joint show, like, it was super, it was super dope and it was whole to me because like, even my mom, like, my Mom never, never likes wrestling. Don't know nothing. I bet if I asked her who the rock do, do she know Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> but even my mom came to job saying that was her first wrestling mm-hmm. front row. And like those are the things that, that we always want to be able to create memories. Those are the things that right. are more important than anything. So us, you know, it matters. And and it's not only only just a, a person of color, but also as a female, is going to be the, the forefront. Because, like, even with Job was saying, even before the, the pandemic, we had the women were going to main event the show. It, mm-hmm. it wasn't a question. It wasn't something that wrote about. Like, it was, it was all of us came to an agreement that no. Then, then for the day of the show, for Swole to say, I've never main evented the show. Because we already knew how the ending was going to go. So it was just like, it, it heartfelt, you know, show and moment. And we try to create those for every show. Even down to the student shows, you know, they they worked so hard, hard at Fallout and, and their hungriness and wanted to be on the show. And, and knowing that, you know, Battle Club is in like Fallout is NXT, but them, you know, wanting to be a part of the show and then that's important so it's always a process but it's it's always going to be fair it happens we, we can fight we can argue we can disagree but, but at the end of the day it's so 
So you you know you touched base on just like the the women main eventing and and having more of a role in you know in professional wrestling you know in general. And I was at the show when they offered you the spot to work fully with Battle Corp Pro, and I was just like, that he okay. tricked me into because <laughs> this one over here, tag tag team partner in Battle Club, Joaquin Morales. So, but I was messing. We, you know, we always were talking, but he had messaged me saying, I want to talk to you about something after. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, no, whatever. All right, whatever. I didn't, I didn't think none of it. Okay, cool. So the, the day of the show and us all being in the ring, mom was front row. So I'm just saying, you know, like, okay, no, we just introduced the show. We're going to welcome everyone. I'm saying, like, now you know, I don't really like attention. Like, that believe it or not so ask me this outside of this room <laughs> but it was such like the uh, it was just like what me, me like what do you mean like what are you talking about because you've already been doing business you know so one thing about us is that we definitely always put our money to support and where it's important so we had already had sponsored so many up as as job tears podcast so we had sponsored a a lot, you know, us doing that joint and him saw the importance of having not only a partner where he can love and have someone supportive, but also being some a, 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 and no one else outside of probably like Thunder Rosa, no one else mm-hmm. that is in that type of role or in, uh, has that type of responsibility. So I had to really sit on it and. Everybody thought it was going to be easy, yes, and it really wasn't mm-hmm. like I thought. I think for t- mm-hmm. till our next our anniversary show was October. I had to figure out an answer because I didn't, didn't know because that's a lot, and you know, it's a commitment. You know, I didn't want to disappoint him, and I didn't, didn't want to disappoint myself because it was like I was show check mm-hmm. that, that was done. <laughs> so now it's like, what's the next goal? And at being able to continue to being a part of the leadership team and battle court, and not only for us, but also for the kids that come through the school, get it like, okay, it's a, so we all have, we have support from so many different, now it's a team. So like, he doesn't have to have the burden of everything and, you know, those weaknesses and strengths. And, you know, I think for us, you know, we've, figured out that okay that, that this is what I'm stick to this is what you're good at this is what you stick to and it just come, comes together sometimes I'd be like I don't know but then and seeing everybody come to the show have fun it's all worth it so it, it was the hardest yes I think I've had, had I don't regret it I, I look at it as the start of a new chapter not only mm-hmm. but also in wrestling um, and it's just, it's been a cool ride. I mean, because I'll go to shows because I'm still a fan. Like, regardless mm. of what our co-owner of Battle Club Pro, whatever it is, I'm still a fan. So if I go to times, they think I'm scouting. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm really <laughs> just here. So seven, yeah, I had went to a show randomly. And I, I went to go support with his brother. And at the Elf Lodge. And I said, you know, I'm going to go and I'm just going to support him. And not knowing it was going to win the tag titles of that night either. So, and one of the guys, he saw me. I was sitting in the corner because I don't, I'm here. He saw me. He was like, like so you hear this guy? I said, no. <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> I'm not here for that. I'm here the support you think about it subconsciously you do look mm-hmm. out for like, like okay who's the next best thing okay right who's look like you you subconsciously think about it especially because i do travel a lot so those shows that you know i may go to on, on an independent level at a different city yeah i'm literally but most of the time i just want to go and disconnect from the professionals <laughs> so right so it, it's always a tug of it's now a bigger tug of war finding that balance and just understanding like this is this, this is what I signed up for look at with grace I take it 
I take it with full responsibility. So whatever comes up, people thinking I'm scouting or not, but it's always just it's like I just want people to always know like it's never about like all right who's who can we get the most you know dollar out of who's gonna be the biggest right. star regardless of what we do like look at like, like every person literally that's actually been on a battle club pro show it's it speaks for itself so then you know on the wall for you know anyone that comes through those doors so you know we take it very serious i just want to be a fan sometimes so <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for any other female who wants to get like into the role that you're in now, like what's the like the one piece of advice that you would give them? Don't think that was a lot of, you know, most females that I know in, you know, in ride wrestling side Mm -hmm. or both. A lot of them, a lot of them feel like they, they won't get the exposure that they want mm-hmm. and it's like you can't so my my biggest advice is don't don't <laughs> don't don't doubt yourself before you even get started and you know I, I'm, I'm truly blessed because I have a really good support system mm-hmm. between the boys his podcast battle club pro my own you know my own relationship like I've always been super supportive of my movie so I think having that support too is super important. Or just on a mental note, just to be able to vent, being able to talk things through, through can be a lot, a lot. But if you are looking to kind of get into that role and, and you know, and ask questions, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't make those type of connections. Don't be af- don't be afraid just because you are a female. You know, they smell that they're like okay i can't take you serious you know they think mm-hmm. you, you you anybody else can so for me, me it's always just don't doubt yourself and get support your system because you're gonna need it <laughs> i mean that that is some great advice especially yeah because it's true because like the the more i get into like the business side of wrestling or just like when you when you look at other fans like on twitter and like tiktok and instagram the minute a female says anything it's like they need to prove themselves as to like why they know this knowledge, you know the what I mean? And just like we, the first year of our podcast, I think one of the biggest things, is, God, she's so knowledgeable, and it's just like, like mm-hmm. why would I, not, like why <laughs> blabbing off about random shit? Yeah. Like why would I do that? So that's actually it's so funny you mentioned it it's all the time. It's like, oh you, oh you know what you're talking about. Yeah, wrestling. I I know what I'm talking about. So it's it, it is definitely I guess prove yourself. Mm-hmm. But I I never I never like the beauty about a podcast is that it's opinionated based. It is my opinion. If you agree, great. If you disagree, great. Because then we can have another disagree. So I think everybody sometimes take things a little too serious and, and <laughs> when it's just really supposed to be fun and you know and and like i said once it stops being here we're in trouble right. so because we're still having fun then then the bad i women have a less smidge harder than the guys so it, it's interesting but like i said i have a, a, a super dope support you know they even though i like to play the back, background Mm-hmm. They will always push me to no, like this is your <laughs> moment. Go for it, right? Because I'm I'm a person, believe it or not. So when they kind of want me in the front, I'm like, all right, let's let's let's. Go. Oh my god! So I'm I'm gonna uh, we we're gonna start wrapping up here um, in a few. So, but I, I have some, I want to get your opinion on a couple of things and a couple of topics I, before I let you go, and okay. I'm just, I'm just gonna. You know, because I, I see the back and forth you guys have on, you know, on the, the Job of Tears podcast. And I a lot of the times I agree with you. And then other times I agree with, like, you know, Sir Wilkins. And I think there was one where it was like the like, 
who has like I think it was like the favorite staple. And I know Wilkins was like the shield. I went with you with the four horsemen, and everybody was like, no. And I was like, no, the four horsemen, like no, everybody, yeah, like everybody individually did something to to they make are this the group. blueprint two stables. Like I don't yeah. it, but like I and it's funny because it actually probably was one of the topics I feel like every it, we weren't even anticipating. Look, like, I honestly Honestly, I don't even remember how we even got to that. So we we'll talked about it maybe like, like a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I don't know how we came back to that because I don't, you know, that we talked about it last week and then this week PWI came out with the top, you know, so probably something that we're going to talk about tomorrow <laughs> well, on, mm-hmm. on our show. But um, but yeah, agree with me. Thank you for having some sense, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> but that's just. Understood where he was coming from about the shield, mm-hmm. but evolution before I even go shield. So it's it just mm-hmm. it, it's interesting. Just like the purpose for evolution was literally the name. So like mm-hmm. Ric Flair, another lifeline. It literally showed us Randy Orton, so to Batista. So like those things are like important, like. Then Seth turned on him. Mm-hmm. Then, I mean, you know, people wasn't about a year and a half ago. Well, how long he's been champion? 300 Sundays? Yeah. So however long Roman's been really been rocking with him now with his tribal chief stuff. So, like, all that, I mean, Dean age So, like, oh, what are exactly. we talking about here? So, But, um, big conversation, though. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm, I want to get your opinion on something. We we're, we're wrapping up with the the years is is coming to a close. So throughout this whole entire 2022, what was like the biggest disappointment in pro wrestling for you? Oh, ooh, ooh. I feel one man's trash is another man's treasure. Same think. Mm. AEW losing Cody was probably um, for them, mm-hmm. um, and in, in wrestling, and like I said, in a whole another game for a whole another set of different fans. Because like I, I was I was so like, woo, that was a different experience. But I, I for them, it was kind of the beginning. Not that I would say the beginning of the end because that's dramatic. But this happened when. Cody left, mm-hmm. and a lot of the, the I think professional for I think a lot of the outside of the wrestling, you know, he wife and think you know those things like that he mm-hmm. was bring, bringing to the table, and that he I think when he decided to like part ways, it was probably the biggest loss that they probably will probably say Punk is, but, but Punk isn't the biggest loss that they had. <laughs> like no, no. You, you you was you could have saw the writing on the walls for that. Mm-hmm. So I was surprised at the media score. I wasn't surprised by any of that. But I would say the biggest thing for them was them letting and not really figuring out a way to keep him on board. Whether it was just he you no know, more and him wanting to wrestle, but then also too, I think a part of it goals and things that he wanted to do in WWE that he didn't get to do yet. And I think when the, it it was a no brainer for him, but it it was I think it's really I think is where started the downfall of AEW and things like that. Mm-hmm. And that type of Cody brought to the table. Um, I'm trying to think. Of, I don't know. I, I try to not think of so many negatives, even though I feel like everyone you know which is fine. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. But I just. I, I try to I, in game of things or try to mm-hmm. see the light at the end of the tunnel, like they're doing with Jade, and it's just like I just gotta sit on it now at this point and wait. Right. What, you, what is your biggest one? I'm sorry. Sorry. I mean, for me, I, I have to say, see, I I have to say, CM Punk, just just the way he handled Whoa. himself. Oh. You know, but, you being a you being a you Brooke Shoja over mm-hmm. ten years ago who he was. 
I don't get how I, I, I don't get it. So so here's a so here's the thing. I took a break from wrestling. Okay. Right. So I missed the CM Punk era of WWE. Ooh. I had to watch it through the WWE network. So a lot of the things that, uh, yeah, so a lot of the things that happened that were reported online and behind the scenes mm-hmm. stuff, I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't know any of it. You know what I mean? No, I, had okay. to, I just watched, I just watched the product of CM Punk and said, okay, cool. And when he came back to a, when he came back to wrestling, I just can't say he came back to AEW. When he came back to wrestling, I was like, okay, well now I get to see CM Punk in person. And then you, just like you said, you kind of, you seen the writings on the wall, like, Little by little throughout the months, you kind of seen us like mm, something doesn't seem right with this guy. Like it's it's a little off. And then the, the power of the Internet, you just start digging and you're like, OK, well, this happened to him when he was in, you know, ROH. And, and this happened to him when he was in WWE. And then you, and then you kind of like yeah. paint the, the 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 picture and you're like, I think it's you, man. Like, you know, <laughs> and it's just like, listen, Phil you, isn't fr- everybody and yeah. i think and, and, and that's all, like his beef with um cole cabana yo, it's so funny i actually have a really funny story real quick so a wrestling convention a few weeks ago so here um like the meet and greets that's where i saw uh-huh. bianca i had posted mm-hmm. pictures of it so cole, cole cabana's table was right next so funny because danny shout out to my hunger danny of pretty heels so she, danny wanted to pitch were Andrade and I was just like okay okay but he wasn't cash and we didn't have cash so we were just like well that's that but, oh shit look at Coco Cabana over there so we was just like like Coco we just want to get to Coco Cabana like we didn't even we, we didn't even say anything else after that we just said come bring him <laughs> and then we walked away but we was just like we just want to give you some love because you out here you know getting treated like the stepchild listen, so. listen, a part of a, a part of me felt a little i you know what i didn't feel bad for cole cabana i felt bad for his mom because she got you know dragged what? into uh <laughs> you got dragged into your <laughs> son's butt. drama you know what i mean uh, i have my own beefs with with cole cabana you know but um Ooh, i want to hit he, he, well, I, well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now. So he was supposed to come on the show, Ooh. and we we emailed each other back and forth, and I'm like, okay, well, let's yeah, let's work out a date, and then I'm like, okay, and he's, I said, normally, like, I'll do like a Wednesday or I'll do a Tuesday because those are like the days that I really had available at the time when I was first doing this, and I just so because I know a lot of the times like you're only working one day and then you're working the weekend. So I'm not going to ask you for a weekend. So I said, Hey, can you do a Tuesday? And he came a little sarcastic and he was like, well, I don't know if you know, but I do this show on Wednesdays called AEW. And I really, it took me so much in me not to oh. email back and be like, well, are you doing dark or are they finally going to put you on dynamite ah. to actually ah. wrestle? Like, <laughs> like let's, let's keep it. Let's keep it 100 no, here. No. Right. So, it's been a valid question. Yeah. So then I, I said, mean, I, I said, okay. I only know that they, most of them travel Monday. Mm-hmm. Like, so like, I'm like my home, like, uh, so I know Will, they tra- like, he, he'll, he'll travel back on Monday. So they're mm-hmm. already kind of in that city the night mm-hmm. before Dynamite. <laughs> like, and he probably wasn't even there. <laughs> yeah. So then. So then I said, okay. So then I emailed them back and I said, um, well, then you let me know the best date and time for you. I, t- I tell that to everyone. I said, you let me know the best date and time that works for you. And then we'll figure, I'll figure it out from there. Your man ghosted me. When I mean ghosted, your man never answered an email, never answered a text, nothing. <laughs> so I, every, so then I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm you out. That's not the first time. It's well, not the well, first I time I've had it. You know, and I've had that, I've had that, right. I've had that happen to me with a couple of, you know, wrestlers that they'll just be like, yeah, I'll do it. And then I send them all the information never shows up. And I'm just like, really? Like, you know, I I check it off to like, you know, I I know I'm a small guy in this big, 
you know, wrestling world still, type of thing and, and media. You know, like, you know, yeah. And so that's I, actually I, why we like, like if we have like a really, really like we have somebody like really, really big, we actually learned. I forgot who it was. So like before we would be like, oh, such and such is coming on the show. And then like if scheduling or something happens and we have to reschedule or we can't do it at all now we mm-hmm. we we've learned through our pro- like through the through the years we don't, don't announce when well, we've had some really dope yep. guests on our show yep. it's really been I like do the, a, i do the same thing too oh but next time can you tell, tell me yeah. I I, you know what i did you know it's like, crazy yes. you know it's crazy as I, I did i i um i do the same thing i don't even tell my friends who i'm going to interview beforehand like we can't uh, we don't tell. I, I maybe, I, I'll maybe, give you. I maybe tell him, but I don't say nothing. Before, before I let you go, I'll tell you one more. I was dealing with WWE, and there was a site. Yeah, we can get you, Champa. He's that's when he was NXT champion at the time. I told my friend who was who does he used to he used to do a lot of editing for me. So I was like, listen, I have a big edit that I need you to help me with. He's like, all right. He's like, who is it? I was like, it's Champa from NXT, and he's a big Champa fan. He was like, serious. And it was like, yeah, he's like, yo, do you mind if I'm like just in the room? And I was like, no, I mean, you, you have to help me anyway. Like, you know what I mean? Like, can I say hi at the end? And so I was like, yeah. So I get everything <laughs> together. We did the we did the artwork. I went online and said, hey, we got a big get. I'm, you know, we we're gonna get, you know, we're we're gonna sit down with Champa from NXT, blah, blah, whatever. Like, this is gonna come on the show next week. And WWE was just like, hey, we're gonna have to pull from the uh from the interview i'm like is there a reason why it was like oh scheduling we'll get back to you the guy never got back to me at all oh no yeah, no and 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 oh, oh, honestly the guy may not even be still working here. low key yeah, that's yeah. the hard part about that <laughs> like, you never know oh, oh but i mean God. that's the you know me everything i i've learned wilkins has taught me because you know that's like one of my best friends everything happens for a reason mm-hmm. and everything that has come in front of us that it's interview, whether it's being able to sponsor, whatever it is that we've been able to do. So, like, I, I try, try to just always keep that, that on the forefront of my brain and, like, okay, what's going and it's going to be cool. cool. But, um, but now, um, next time, let's know. So, we can I take got care. you. But, yeah. I mean, obviously, but, a lot of people know who the Java Team <laughs> podcast are for the people who are listening to this, where can they catch you guys um, every week? Live, for the most part, every Thursday or around 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Live, if you want to do that. Or we do um, do post the audio the next day. All streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple, all that jazz. Um, you can follow all social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook. You can join our Facebook group, um, Instagram. We'll- have our very first viewing party of 2023. The boys will be there hosting. I actually will be in the rumble. So I'm not there. <laughs> so if you do go, just don't uh-huh. come looking for me because I'm probably not I got there. you. But or, um, hopefully the next Battle Club Pro, Pro Show is Saturday. Is the week, the Saturday before Royal Rumble. Uh, we're Sir Wilkins' first match ever, his debut match will be I know. January twenty. In Miller of Walt Culture, so stay tuned for that. We will, we may have something the night. Um, um, so I'm still trying to work some things out for that. Okay. But now that I have officially gotten flight, and he's coming, <laughs> unless the world shuts down again and just some shit. Oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be. <laughs> but we're not gonna. You know, it's great. Talk that into existence. Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, but. No, so, can you, for all that you do, for all that you put your work and bless with and tears, you know, as a guest, you know, you're, you're, I'm humbled, but it's always important to do. So just, just know that whatever you're doing, keep it up. Whatever support you need, we be proud that, that we've been able to cross paths and be able to help each other love wrestling. So thank mm-hmm. you. <laughs> well, thank you. 
So, guys, that's uh, that's the end of our episode. You know, uh, let's give a big shout out to Janelle. Let's give a big shout out to uh, the team over at Java TS Podcast. Obviously, uh, this is powered by the Knuckleheads Network and sponsored by Ringside Collectibles. Uh, like I said before, at the top of the show, don't forget to use the code word, uh, the call up to save 10%. Shout out to the Dirty Heels. Shout out to Circle Debate, Henny Wrestling, uh, the Pro Wrestling Podcast, uh, Wrestling Inc., because they've always helped me out throughout the times as well. Um, And everyone else who listens and supports the show and comes to the live streams every single Monday and just listens to us talk and play games on Monday nights. Uh, Guys, remember that... So yeah, listen, you have to. We, we, we actually we actually added more games to this. So definitely, I, I think you'll okay. love... Yeah. I'm going to let you, um, you know when, I, when I'm going to hop on. <laughs> Got you. Uh, so, guys, remember that you are the the writer, the producer, the star of your own journeys. Don't let anyone stop you from achieving your dreams and continue to fight the good fight. Guys, until next time, have a safe one.